I'm here with the man himself. Here with Samir. Yes, Thiering. I've been asking a lot of different entrepreneurs and creators throughout the whole year, and I've kind of had a certain through line with this answer. I'm really interested to see what it is. Your best investment in the last year. I think it's something that's, that's happened more recently is investing in other people and bringing on two full-time oh, employees. Yeah. My best travel investment has been TSA PreCheck because I don't, no have to, joke. I don't have to unpack my camera bag every single time I'm going through the, the airport. My best investment in the past year uh, has been in self. You know, it's, it oftentimes feels like, you know, you want to make a better video, you got to spend more time shooting, you got to spend more time, you know, right. writing, like all that, like that, it's very easy to get caught up in, I have to do more. Um, and it's really easy to overlook what it takes to invest in yourself. On three, two, one, action. I find it very hard to give and help and be a just efficient, person in general if I don't take care of myself as well. And so just investing in my own mental health, my sanity. I think Thomas Bragg is an incredible uh, person who has taught me that the value of routine and how do you get yourself into a creative routine that allows you to brainstorm, that allows you to actually slow down and spend the time. So, you know, he focuses a lot on meditating. It's very hard. I kind of, my whole life, I'm a giver. Like I love helping people. I love just being in service and like making people happy. But I realized like I reached a cap last year and I was just so unhappy. And I realized that I like hadn't thought about what I wanted at all. And so I had a moment where I stopped questioning all the little aspects of my life, my habits, what I was doing, what I wasn't doing, and tried to realign it with my goals. I have been somebody who's been very stubborn, but also very passionate about my work. Like I love editing, I love producing and writing and everything that goes into my videos. I really love it. But I knew that if I wanted to grow and I wanted to continue to evolve and do bigger projects while also not burning out, I had to bring on an editor and writers and other people that could help to collaborate with me to make my videos even better, but also to allow me to take some things off my plate. So investing in other people is definitely um, the best thing that I've done in the past year. I'm wondering whether I just need to hire on help, like hire an assistant, because if I want to be creating things, then I maybe need to free up some of the other parts of my life. So that's hard. I want to say our, our home, because mm -hmm. that's the biggest one I've ever made. And it is where we work and where we live. And it's such a great place to come back to. It's cool that we get to feature it in our videos, especially at this stage too. And it's our set, it's everything. So yeah. Uh, my best sort of personal investment, I think for myself would be uh, spending more time away from like digital things, taking more time to just like kind of go through walks with the city, just with my brain and my thoughts and having to sort of work through different problems that I'm facing in my life. I would say that's probably the thing I value most. Wow, dude, there's so many screens in New York. <laughs> it's like definitely vying for your attention here in Times Square. And really thinking about what are my goals? What am I trying to do? Who do I want to become? And then I kind of just started to like journal a lot and try to flesh all that out. And once I felt like I had my own personal goals outside of Yes Theory, because with everything we do, we do everything together. But I felt like I had to find my own thing that I felt like was aligned with my identity and what I wanted to achieve. And once I had that, it was just, all right, now let's, let's execute. Let's line this up. Started waking up earlier, exercise at first thing every morning, meditate, just take care of myself so that I can just be the best I can possibly be every day. Sit-ups were hard, a lot harder than I thought. I'm coming to the conclusion that all trails should have these machines on them. These are awesome. They're a lot of fun. When you start to recognize as a creative, like the most important asset you have is your mind, right? And oftentimes we don't take care of that. We don't sleep enough. We don't work out. We don't meditate. We don't go to therapy. We don't actually invest in the asset that is our mind. And that's like the most important thing. Here's the deal. We walk around feeding ourselves beer and pizza or the equivalents thereof, mm -hmm. but we would never feed our businesses that and expect to get positive results. If you want to do more in the world, you have to first be more. And the only way you can be more is if you have healthy mind, body, and spirit, period. If you don't have that, you're, you're, you're running around with a crutch. And I got that backwards for so long thinking that, hey, business grows, I'll be happy. Business grows, I'll be healthy. Business grows, I'll be this. Now it's I'm healthy and thriving, my business exponentially grows. I'm investing in that, my business exponentially grows. So I'm putting one foot out ahead and the business is the beneficiary, not the other way around. And that was a huge misconception that I had and almost all entrepreneurs have right now, except for the elite few.
best investment this year has definitely been investing in like opportunities like Vid Summit or VidCon to just make sure I go out and meet other creatives because networking, like meeting new people who have the same interests as me, has been literally life changing and so many opportunities have arised from that. So even though it costs a lot to like come out here and do this stuff, it's definitely worth it in the long run, I think. I gotta see my phone because I've made so many connections with people on my phone, like a bunch of friendships on YouTube. They're like my best friends. And then we connect whenever we go to events like Vid Summit, VidCon, NAB, like this is, that's our time to hang out. Um, even talking with people through Twitter from my phone uh, and you know, getting to know people like Leela and, you know, hanging out with Peter McKinnon finally and, you know, being friends with Roberta Blake. Like it's all because of a, a single device that you can use to just to connect with people and share your stuff on. And so the phone, like I will invest heavily on a good phone so that I can use that to connect with other people. You think about how other people get things done, other non-solo entrepreneurs or creative entrepreneurs, people that work in regular jobs. Mm -hmm. They have an entire team usually surrounding them. You're working in small groups, you're working with a team and you all draw energy from each other, you hold each other accountable, you're doing all these things. It's like, that's something that we do not have as usual solo creative entrepreneurs, right? We don't have colleagues. As often as we can draw energy from each other, I think that's gonna benefit everyone because that's, I think that's how humans are meant to function. So it's a bit unfortunate that we're all not like on a college campus together just doing YouTube. Could like you imagine <laughs> if like everybody was in that close proximity? Oh my God. Oh my gosh. It's like we'd either get everything done or nothing done. I think there'd be so many quote unquote bangers. I think we'd get a lot. We'd be making some bangers and mash. A lot. <laughs> but I would just say like, find yourself a morning routine that sets you up to be the most creative for that day. Like what is it that you have to do in the morning to be a productive creative? For me, it was working out outside for at least 45 minutes a day. It did exponential amount of awesomeness to the rest of my content. For you specifically, I know you mentioned meditating and like what's been the biggest thing for you? Probably meditation. I started surfing a lot, so the outdoors thing, I, I relate to it. Like waking up at like 5.30 to just go surf for an hour. I was like, I didn't have my phone on, couldn't reach me. I was in the water. Like it, it was cold, which like woke me up. I was like present and it was, in, it was a mix between like a very peaceful experience and a very intense one, like adrenaline packed one. And so that for me really changed my life for a while. And it kind of also pushed me a little bit towards meditation where it got me curious to learn more about it. So the combination of both is really what's made the difference. Um, exercise, meditation, when you get those two things together, it's like life changing. So I live in Manhattan. I was walking up the West Side Highway a couple weeks ago. Didn't have a phone, didn't have anything. And there's a stadium across the river that had a malfunction. And basically at the end of like a sports game, fireworks were going off. It malfunctioned. All the fireworks went off at one time. No. <laughs> it was one of the most insane like light shows I've ever seen in my life. And I had nothing to capture it. I wasn't listening to anything. All I could do was stand there and observe the chaos that was going on in front of me. And it was so just like interesting and beautiful and like everything was amazing. Um, but that being said, I would say on a weekly basis, I go on walks without technology because it's some of the only times I sort of like break through the barriers that I'm facing in creativity. So a lot of times I'm scripting out videos, I'll write a bunch of stuff, I'll hit a wall. And the second I hit a wall, I just recognize that, leave the computer, go somewhere else, I go for a walk, I go somewhere. And that's normally where the problems I'm facing in that script start to unravel themselves. When did you make the decision to take the podcast off your channel and just focus on your story-driven content? Yeah, that was a tough decision, especially for me, like because I'm a perfectionist and I, I feel like I, I do something a certain way and a lot of times I feel like, well, that's the way I have to do it forever. And if I change that up, then I'm a failure. Yeah. But it was at the beginning of this year and I'm, you know, I'm just looking at my main videos that would do really well, would probably at the time get 100,000 to 300,000 views per yeah. video. Yeah. And then the videos on my, my, for my podcast would be like 10,000 or 15,000. And they, the two different pieces of content were totally different from each other. And I know. Sense. Why? Yeah. So I think what it was, it was that thinking about expectations. What are people expecting to get when, they're, uh, when they see a video of mine pop up on their feed? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to optimize for a thumbnail or the title so then somebody would watch a podcast because then they wouldn't be expecting to get an interview from me. So like, well, let me just separate the two of them, make it very clear. Uh, and then e while doing that, it ended up informing and changing my content up because I was holding onto the podcast 
and was like, I cannot stop this. Like, I, I have to keep doing this because it was the first thing that I was really passionate about when creating original content. But then it allowed me to step away from it and realize, okay, I can actually take a break from this. I don't need to kill myself doing everything myself right now. I can come back to the podcast later. I did separate the channels, but right now I've just taken a break and just focusing exclusively on the YouTube channel and uh, another documentary that I'm working on now. So that was the main decision that went into it and it, it's worked out really well and it's it also just creates an element of consistency. People know exactly what they're gonna get if they're clicking on one of my videos and they're not gonna be fooled by clicking on an hour long podcast that they might not wanna watch. Yeah, and uh, just as a quick aside, I, kudos to you when you do come up with your titles for your podcast, they are they're just very simple, like with a little period. And it's not like with such and such big name, there could be a really big name in the podcast, but you still make it. So it's just like a really simple phrase. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, man. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, dude. I really appreciate it. When you interview a lot of successful people and a lot of people keep saying the same things, there's got to be something there to it. <laughs> yeah, man. There's a pattern. Thank you so much for your time, man. Sweet. Thank you, man. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe or follow the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That's the Passion in Progress show. Links in the description. If this has gotten you to go out and create or think differently about your day-to-day -day habits, I highly suggest checking out episode 69 of the show. It's where I tell you about my experience doing the hashtag 75 hard challenge, which really helped me gain mental toughness and build a better habit lifestyle. Till next episode, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.